This episode brought to you by Chime, the award-winning app and debit card that can save you money today. Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic Guy. Remember it so you don't have to. In a time where maybe, just maybe, more and more people are seeing animation as more grown-up than most grown-up entertainment, you gotta think about those anime films that blurred that line in the past. You got your Fritz the Cat, your Akira's, your Sausage Parties. Movies that showed American audiences there can be anime films exclusively for adults. And of course, the 1999 film that challenged the ideas of censorship, scapegoating, and call-out culture while having a show that oftentimes was the center of all three. And of course, talk about the foul mouth wonders themselves, South Park. Not like other anime films based on shows made over a decade earlier, South Park had a bizarre contract that said they needed to make a movie along with their show. Maybe because the show was so low budget and quick to produce they figure a movie would be easy, I'm not sure. But rather than waiting for their popularity to kind of die down, the movie was released arguably at the peak of their success. While the show had constant run-ins with parental groups about what can be shown and said on TV, the movie decided to focus on not only the outrage that the show was getting, but the probable outrage their movie was going to get. They had constant arguments with the MPAA about what justified an R-rated film as opposed to an NC-17 film, which many theaters wouldn't show. Like a note they received once that said if there were over 400 swear words, the film would be NC-17. So the creators put in this, no joke, 399. Yep, that one extra swear word would have scarred a 16-year-old for life, I guess. On that note, while this film managed to challenge censorship in the theatrical world, YouTube is much less forgiving if even one F-bomb is dropped. So, we'll have our cute kitty chaplain saying words with the exact same meaning, but technically aren't swears. So advertisers can rest assured people who don't want to deal with the real world don't have to. Right, chaplain? You said it, feces digester! Already off to a great start, let's take a look at South Park Bigger, Longer, and Uncut. Actually, the title itself is a perfect sum up of the ridiculousness of MPAA standards. The original title was South Park All Hell Breaks Loose, but the MPAA wouldn't allow a title with the word hell in it. I think everyone can agree Bigger, Longer, and Uncut is far more dirty, but it doesn't have the word a Disney character used in a G-rated film in the 50s, so I guess it's okay. The film opens, funny enough, with no swearing at all. It builds up the oncoming onslaught of indecency by opening with a Disney-style song. In fact, the whole film is constructed like a Broadway-style musical at a time when that really wasn't popular. Even Disney was backing off heavy from it. In fact, they lost the Oscar for Best Song to Phil Collins singing one of these pop songs that can vaguely be played on the radio or in the movie. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Was totally meant for just the movie. The fact that it could be played on the radio as well, just pure coincidence. Okay, okay, if the South Park guys could eventually stop with this joke, so can I. Bottom line, it was pretty ballsy to do something many movie audiences saw as lame at the time and breathed new life into it. Tipping their hat to the genre, but still doing it their way. Off to the movies we shall go. The boys are excited because they're finally going to see the Terrence and Philip movie, based on the raunchy cartoon they love to watch. As you quickly guess, the cartoon and everybody's overreactions to it are a satire of their own interactions with the show and what they presumed were going to be the reactions to the movie. Hell didn't quite rise up, but Saddam Hussein did die, so there's that. After walking by a picture of one of the director's sisters, they find they can't get into the theater because they're not old enough. Yeah, it's almost like the cartoon you're watching clearly isn't for kids. I want six tickets to Asses of Fire. They get a homeless guy to purchase the tickets, and they're introduced to their favorite cartoon characters saying things they've never heard them say on TV. Cha -cha. Fornicating. Roller in the hay. Rooster. Gluteus Maximus. Proprietor of tail. It probably goes without saying, but the songs are massive toe-tappers, and everyone credits Parker and Stone, but the composer, Mark Shaman, who's written many catchy themes in the past, also deserves a ton of credit. It's pretty cool how people naturally underestimated this team's musical abilities, yet they would go on to be nominated and even win almost every musical award there is. We just went to go see the Terrence and Philip movie. The next day, the boys talk about the movie they saw and share their new colorful vocabulary. 
Stan is thrown off, though, when he sees Wendy, the girl he's in love with and keeps puking on. Yeah, it's also kind of fun revisiting these old South Park tropes they haven't used in a while. But it looks like she's being courted by a boy named Gregory. Wanna skate with us? We've been skating all morning and laughing and talking of memories past. I could be wrong, but I swear this is based on Nigel from Top Secret. I never heard them confirm that, but come on. Get lots of sleep. Tomorrow, we will all be risking our lives for freedom. Hillary, how wonderful that you've returned to me now. When I so desperately need you by my side to fight for the cause. Our cause. Though surprisingly, this isn't the film that has a cow mounting him scene in it. Soon all the kids see the movie and are using the same colorful language. You can't say Milky. You can school you. Screwing. Fat. Buttocks. Kyle. Why the f Whoopi. Not. Eric. Dude, you just said. Sexual Congress. Again. Stanley. Ooh. Kenny. It's a good time to mention this film has the record for the most swear words used in an animated movie. <laughs> the boys get in trouble for their harsh language, but that's not on Stan's mind as he still wonders how to win Wendy over. Chef, how do you make a woman like you more than any other guy? Oh, that's easy. You just gotta find the- I think I can say this one. I'm not sure with YouTube. Oh, I'll just play this. Dolores! You guys, do you know where I can find the- Dolores! The what? What, is that like finding Jesus or something? No, Jesus is easier to find and easier to please. The school panics at the popularity of Terrence and Philip, and in one of the many examples of censorship working against the censor, the school says anyone wearing a Terrence and Philip shirt will be sent home, only encouraging the kids to love them more. Is the film destroying American youth? Here with a special report is a midget in a bikini. It's gonna sound weird to say, but I really forgot how random early South Park humor was. The school tries to sing to the kids how to say other words despite them meaning the exact same thing. This works for the moment, but once they see the movie again, they're back to their old ways. In fact, they're inspired by the movie to light their farts on fire, resulting in, yeah, spoiler, Kenny getting killed. Load that IV with 70 cc's of sodium pentothal. George Clooney, an early promoter of the show, has graduated from voicing a dog to voicing a doctor, and even eventually be mocked by the show down the line. Not gonna lie, that kinda feels right somehow. Kenny goes to the afterlife, which, to quote the three little bops, didn't go to heaven was the other place. A moment of gratification for years of me saying, that's James Hetfield singing that, and everybody saying, no it is, and it'd be in the credits. Well, he is now, lady dogs. <laughs> Still has better effects than Constantine. The parents decide the movie is to blame for all their kids' troubles, and seeing how the film is from Canada, they... Well, you all know the song. Play Canada! Play Canada! And yes, as much as we like to mock the Oscars for being dim-witted and out of touch, especially when it comes to animation, them nominating the song and having Robin Williams sing it does show they can have a brain every once in a while. Not enough to give it to them, but okay, okay, I'm moving on. Play Canada! This, of course, is a satire of outrage culture, claiming media is destroying the sensitive minds of the country and censorship is the only answer, never realizing their outrage might be doing more harm than good. This is, no surprise, still practiced today. As it ping-pongs in between political extremes. Yeah, remember boycott is totally different from cancel. That's something only the other side does, not us. Please welcome Terrence and Philip. <laughs> A bunch of parents show up to cancel Terrence and Philip. I mean boycott, sorry, it just gets so different. When Conan O'Brien, voiced randomly by Brent Spiner, and Brooke Shields, voiced also randomly by Minnie Driver, turns them in to the authorities. I farted once on the set of Blue Lagoon. I didn't know I needed a Canadian cartoon slapping Brooke Shields, but that might be the funniest scene in the movie. You loved our movie, Conan! What have I done? Truth be told, I think this entire scene exists just to show Conan on his own show. I sound like that? <laughs> <laughs> well, mm, hello, fellows. Mm, nice to have you here. The Canadian government gets back at them, though, by bombing the Baldwins. As if they weren't bombed most of the time. Do you know what sucks about being a Baldwin? Nothing! <laughs> Fear not, the same team will be much nicer to the Baldwins in the future. Global warming and, and corporate America. <laughs> and no doubt the Baldwin name will always be associated with something good. The U.S. declares war on Canada, and Kyle's mom takes over as Secretary of Offense. God, that's good. Announcing that Terrence and Philip are to be executed. Again, a nice jab that Americans are fine with vulgar violence just as long as non-vulgar language is being used. Meanwhile, back in hell, okay, you gotta love a film when that's a segue. Kenny is being tortured by Satan and his lover, a constantly aroused Saddam Hussein. Man, this is getting me so hot. You let me do my job, please. Come on, rub my nipples while I torture this little piggy. I know this is played for last, but if you've seen the paintings at his home, this honestly isn't far off. 
A little extra money helps everyone live their best lives. And Chime's online checking account is here to help you live yours. In fact, I've saved so much money, I don't need to do these sponsorships anymore. I can pay someone else to do it. With Chime's online checking account, you can enjoy- Well, well don't read it. Well, what do you want me to do? Well, like, memorize it and, then, like, say it. I can't- I don't no, want to get it not, wrong. Just... With Chime's online checking account, you can enjoy lots of perks, like fee-free overdrafts up to $200. You can even get paid up to two days early with direct deposit. No more pesky overdraft fees and no impact on your credit score to apply. The lawnmower. Shut up! Hey, now do something zany. Like what? I don't know. I always do something weird in these. Just, just do it. Uh, I don't know what you... I'm trying as hard as I can! With qualifying direct deposit, you can get access to your money sooner. Overdraft up to $200 without fees with SpotMe when you set up a qualifying direct deposit. Just set up a qualifying direct deposit, sign up for SpotMe, and Chime will spot you up to your limit when you make a purchase that exceeds your balance. Chime has no monthly minimum balance or overdraft fees. That's more than the top three national banks combined. Easily find one near you with the Chime app. WHAT ARE YOU DOING THERE?! Pay friends through Chime no matter what bank account they use and cash out your money fee-free. I, I think I can kind of see it. Signing up for Chime takes minutes, so join the millions of other Chime members and sign up today. Get started at Chime.com forward slash nostalgia. That's Chime.com forward slash nostalgia. Did you say forward slash? Y yeah. I've been saying slash this whole time. I mean, there's two different types of slashes, so you gotta specify. Yeah, well, can you do the fast stuff? <clears throat> Chime is a financial technology company, not a bank. Banking services and debit card provided by the Bancorp Bank NA or Stride Bank NA. Members FDIC. Eligibility requirements and overdraft limits apply. Access to direct deposits up to two days early depending on the timing of the submission of the payment filed from the payer. Out of network ATM withdrawal fees may apply. This was Doug Walker the whole time. What are you doing? plays Jedi Survivor every Friday on Twitch. We also have content five days a week. Hope to see you there. Everyone blames Kyle's mom for starting this war and the kids start to band together to protest it. Stan even decides to get political because he thinks it'll win over the girl he loves. Again, tell me you've never seen that happen in real life. This is all Kyle's mom's fault. Shut up, Cartman! This results in Cartman singing the always classic She Poodle Lassie Canine of the Feminine Breed He even sings it in different languages like It's a Small World. <laughs> Will I for one give credit that Cartman is exfoliating his skin with a beauty mask while singing this number? However, if this was to be taken any other way, I for one would be offended by this cartoon that constantly declares it's trying to offend me. Because just like Tropic Thunder and Always Sunny in Philadelphia, all these characters are smart, kind, level-headed role models that are clearly saying we need to be exactly like. If that wasn't the case and these were stupid ignorant morons, hell, even satirizing stupid ignorant morons, dare I say, there could be comedy involved. But that's not it. There's a beauty mask, so there's no problem. As you might have expected though, Kyle's mom hears the song and forces Cartman to get a V-chip in his brain. This is a parody of the V-chip that was made to block shows like South Park from being seen by children, but despite so many groups complaining something like this needs to exist, very few parents actually purchased it. Proving again it was much more about complaining than actually solving the problem. This scenario though takes it to the next step where rather than censor what children watch, it censors what they say and even think. I also love them confusing Cartman not wanting to swear with him not being able to swear. Success! The child doesn't want to swear! This isn't fair, you send a baby here! I should know. People joked they wanted to crucify me because I joked about crucifixion. At least I think they were joking about it. It's also pretty great all these parents talking about how important their children are while totally ignoring their own children. You started a war, you have to stop it! To make them safe again! Hello? Our children are precious! Hello? Wait until the world unites several groups with social media, then we'll all listen to each other. And the same way so many kids are introduced to classical music via Looney Tunes, I think a lot of us were introduced to Brian Boitano through this song. I'm sure he'd kick an ass or two, that's what Brian Boitano do. And if you're wondering what Brian Boitano thinks of it... It's been great being a small part of your journey on South Park. Well, that makes writing a punchline hard, so... F*** you all. Get me a f***ing brownie. Haha, <laughs> he sucks! Next scene. 
The boys send a message to all the kids saying if they want to help Terrence and Philip, they all need to meet up. Meanwhile, Kenny hears that Satan is going to take over the world once Terrence and Philip are killed, as is told in the prophecy that clearly they're not putting much effort into. We used to talk all night long until the sun came up. Well, yeah, because I was still waiting to get you in bed, dummy. Okay, so here's kind of a confession I have about this movie. It's always around this point that I remember it. I love talking about this film. I look back on it fondly. I remember the commentary, songs, and a fair amount of laughs. But I also have to admit, it can get a little boring. And I don't think it's a coincidence that it's around the half hour mark where I start to think that. Because South Park is a half hour show. If you're gonna drag this out in an hour and a half movie though, there's two issues. One is you can't rely on the animation being visually interesting for that long because, well, it's South Park, that's part of the joke, it's cheap animation. For an hour and a half though, that's a pretty long time to look at this cheap ass style. But in that case, the comedy really has to be upped and it's good, it's clever commentary and does make me laugh at times. But there are long stretches where the jokes are a little weak or include scenes that don't even end on a joke. The Brian Boitano song ends on a freeze frame. There's nothing really that funny about that. This scene ends with them naming the group. The password is La Resistance. I never got a laugh when I saw it in the theater. And don't get me wrong, it's not like every scene has to have a laugh, but for an hour and a half of visually dull and not particularly complex characters, Unless there's continually songs or jokes, there's not going to be that much entertainment in the moment. Granted, they were making this while they were also working on the next season and fighting with the MPAA. It's impressive we got what we got. But the film does drag a bit because of it. I find surprisingly this is quite common with comedies that have memorable jokes or commentary like Krampus or Borat or Life Aquatic. There's a ton of greatness that stays with you, but when you sit through them again, you forget it's a bit of a snooze fest at times. I will admit though, I'd much rather have a movie stay with me and have boring moments than a film that's entertaining from beginning to end, but completely forget about it. So don't get me wrong, I'm not saying this makes it a bad film by any means, but it is an interesting thing to point out. With that said, when they are doing a song or a joke or both, they really are great. I love they try to make Satan the Lord of Darkness almost like a longing Disney princess. He wants to take over the world simply so he can see it. It's honestly kind of a funny idea. And yeah, okay, it's not like this is that deep a song, but for audiences just looking for fart jokes, I guess some of these lyrics can be a little challenging. Without evil, there can be no good, so it must be good to be evil sometimes. Can you get a little bit more distance from Sodom when you say that? The kids meet up, and despite Stan trying to be the leader, Gregory takes charge. And I think it only figures my favorite song in the movie is a combination of all the songs. Tomorrow night to a pig. To night. Night. Seriously, this song is just so damn good. The counterpoint melodies, the orchestrations. It's like Les Mis if the singing was intentionally bad. The only downside is, it reminds me this movie needs more butters. He's my favorite character, we need more of him. I'll accept the artificial version. Saddam whips out his <clears throat> weapon of mass destruction, which I'll admit watching at home isn't that funny, but in a theater, Christ does this get a big laugh, so I think it balances out. We need to speak with the mole. They get help from a kid called the mole. Okay, come on, Butters could have been the mole. Eh, maybe he wasn't that popular yet, I don't know. And Saddam sings a song to Satan about how he'll be better to him. But I can change, I can change. I can learn to keep my promises, I swear it. While the song is fine on its own, it is the only musical number where I start to feel people squirming in their seats. It's the cheer up Charlie of the flick. You'll get through it fine, but you always forget it's in the movie. Welcome to the USO Show! There's a big USO show before the execution of Terrence and Philip, which includes Big Gay Al and Winona Ryder. Here's my famous ping pong ball trick! There, I didn't miss one! <laughs> she really stole the show. Yes, 2023, the only other thing we got on her is this meme. What am I supposed to do with this? Big Gay Al also sings his song, and it looks like part of his name was exaggerated. He's actually bi. And the Canadians attack, just as Stan finds the... <clears throat> Dolores! Tell me how to get Wendy to like me. Dude, you just have to have confidence in yourself. Chicks love confidence. I'm confident no matter what I do, this is still gonna get me age-restricted. 
On that note, Operation Human Shield puts all the black soldiers in the front to be shot first. But they move out of the way, letting the others get nuked. You some people gonna die? Wait, wait, wait. Are you insinuating that Jar Jar is... the same actor as that guy? Oh my god, I'm amazed! Stan leads the kids, but Terrence and Philip get killed off, allowing hell to rise. Carmen's V-chip starts malfunctioning, though, and starts shocking others whenever he swears. So, of course, vulgar language saves the day. I also love how the big final swear he uses is just Barbara Streisand's name. Intimate relations. Yeah. Stool. Yeah. Member. Yeah. Posterior. Yeah. Globes. Yeah. Pocket rocket. Yeah. Hound dog of the fair sex. Yeah. Muff. This kind. Yeah. Front bottom. Yeah. Downstairs. Yeah. Rectum. Yeah. Bitch. I have had enough of you! Satan kills Saddam, and Satan gives Kenny any wish he wants because he showed him he was in a terrible relationship. Kenny wishes everything to go back to the way it was, which would mean he would have to go back to hell also. This results in Kenny finally revealing himself, and... I'm kinda torn on this. On the one hand, this was a big selling point in the trailers. See what Kenny looks like. Kenny McCormick. And it is a little funny that, well, he looks like any other kid. Goodbye, you guys. It's also cool they got animation legend Mike Judge to voice him. I'm not crying. It's just... I gotta get out of here. But I guess I feel like they did this idea better other times with Kenny revealing what he looks like and even sounds like. I don't know. It's not bad. I just think it's done better later. Nah, I'm not sure. I could be alone on that. What do you think? <laughs> Everything's put back to normal. Kenny even goes to heaven because he ironically accepted he would go to hell. And the final song is sung. Even Free Willy does a big jump at the end. And that was South Park Bigger, Longer, and Uncut. Both dated, but in many ways still relevant. I think issues of censorship and passing blame onto others for things we don't like is always going to be a thing. Just like sophisticated humor and immature humor are always going to be a thing. So it makes sense a movie like this would combine all that. It's a good representation of what South Park was at the time, and both audiences and critics seem to enjoy the film okay. There's been talks of a sequel for a while, actually their Imagination Land miniseries was almost going to be a movie, but the team never quite felt they had the proper follow-up. Much like the Simpsons movie, I don't think it makes sense to do a sequel unless it's years after the finale, or maybe even serves as the finale. It just wouldn't feel as large or important if they did it while the show was still going. The same people worked on several projects, though, that had both a large and hilarious scale. So we're not short sure any great quality from this group. But for a team that's constantly been in battle over censorship for years and years, I think it's clear their movie talking about censorship has warranted authority worth respecting. I'm a nostalgia critic, guy, remember? So you don't have to. I love you. We're still doing cameos for charity, and this month, we're doing Lurie Children's Hospital. They understand that caring for kids takes more than medicine. From diagnosis to treatment, it requires compassion and understanding that kids do best when they get to be kids. With a team of world-renowned pediatric experts and kid-friendly care, there's a reason they're ranked number one children's hospital in Illinois. So if you want a cameo of me saying happy birthday or good luck or whatever, click on the link below and be giving to a good cause. If you're like, no, I hate you and everything there is to hate about you, well, check out this wonderful place anyway. The great people that do great work and you can help them in a great way.